Did your cymbidiums flowering not live up to expectations this year? Perhaps it didn't flower at all. Or the flowers just fell off too early. Let's have a look into some of the reasons why this could possibly have happened and help you fix it so that next year you can have that amazing display again. Welcome to The Nature Company. If this is the kind of information you're interested in, please hit that subscribe button down below and that notification bell to be notified of all our upcoming content so you don't miss out on a thing. So one of the reasons that your cymbidium may not have flowered as well as you had expected is that perhaps you had left all of this debris, these fallen leaves and twigs and things in the center of your plant. What is going to happen is as your flower bud starts to push up through them, it can start to just get caught up in it. And if this holds too much water, it will just rot it off. Or the flower spike just realize it doesn't have, it's not getting to the light and it just aborts itself. So what we need to do is we need to make sure we get in and clear all of this debris out so that we can get that good air movement in between and allow for the air to circulate through so we don't get that rotting off to happen. And also what we want to do is we want to ensure that we can get some sunlight into the bulbs of the plant. That's going to help force those flower spikes to be produced and to mature properly. So often without that sunlight reaching the bulbs, it just won't produce the flowers, thinking it's in too dark a shade and those flower spikes just won't mature. So one of the best things to do is if you've been keeping your cymbidium in about 50% shade through the summer months, then start moving it to brighter and brighter light in the winter months as it starts to get cooler. If you're taking it indoors during the winter, if you're really cold, then put it next to a window that is going to get that bright full sun coming through the window. In most areas, the winter sun is a lot less damaging to a plant than the summer sun. So you can actually put these out in the full sun in winter so that we can get that sun into the plant and get, get it onto those back bulbs. Also, we've got to remember if our plant is too compact. If it has overgrown itself, you'll also find you'll have difficulty getting it to flower as there'll be nowhere for those flower spikes to push their way through all the matted mess. There won't be enough air movement, not enough light. That would then be a sign that you need to divide your plant up to allow for that extra air movement and light into your plant so that those flower spikes can mature properly. Also a good idea when you're cleaning up is taking off these old sheaths since the majority of us are growing them in artificial conditions. These sheaths are not really needed and it will help you spot any insects or other infestations that want to build up underneath them and you'll know whether they need to be cleared out quickly. They'll need to be treated for that quickly or not. Also, if your cymbidium is pot bound, it's probably not going to flower as well because your roots are probably suffocating each other. It's not getting enough water, it's not getting enough air and hence it's not getting enough nutrition. So that's another sign that it needs to be repotted for it to then come back and to, to bloom properly again. Also, if your leaves are these beautiful dark green, you know you're not going to get flowers either. You want almost a sickly yellow to them. It seems a bit odd, but that's the way they're going to flower the best is when they're getting all that sun to give that yellow tone to their leaves. This deep green means the Leaves are really healthy, but it means that they're producing too much chlorophyll, trying to produce energy from the sun, which is non-existent. So we want that nice bright, bright yellow green in your plant, and you know you're more likely to get a better set of flowers. Also cleaning up your plant, you want to take off any old diseased leaves, pull out the old dead leaves, anything which is going to obstruct the air and light and cause possible infestations of disease or insects or anything. Just remove all of that from your plant so it can be in the best state possible for future growth. And as you get stronger future growth, you know you're going to get more blooms. Also, one of the reasons that your blooms might die early is when you stake them up too late. What will happen is you'll probably bend 
the flowering spike. And in that bending and cracking of the flowering spike, it's no longer able to keep the flowers alive for very long. So if you're wanting to stake your flowers up to get the best display, start early. Start while it's still young and tender and soft and then you work it up your stake instead of just trying to put your stake in and then bending the flowers back to in an upright position. And also by removing all of this debris from in between your plant, you're less likely going to get fungal diseases or bacterial diseases that will then affect the flowering as well and cause them to prematurely drop or cause flower abortion altogether. If you're worried about when to use that blooming fertilizer formulation as opposed to the growing fertilizer formulation, what you do is you wait until about middle of autumn or any time in autumn. As soon as you start seeing those flower spikes being pushed up, then you can start changing across to the blooming formulation. So then you want a fertilizer with a high potassium and phosphorus mix in it. So you're looking for something like a 63030. Um, we'll leave a link to one of those available online. And then that you're going to carry on feeding through until your blooms are done in, a, in about mid spring. And then you will change back. As soon as your blooms are done, you can move back into your high nitrogen fertilization. And if you're growing your cymbidiums indoors, because they like that good, they, because they like that fast drainage, you're going to have to make sure you've got a tray underneath them to catch that water. But you don't want your pot to be sitting in that tray so that it's basically sitting in the water. You want to lift that pot up out of the tray so that the water will sink down to the bottom and your pot's not sitting in it. So you can fill your tray with pebbles or or lift your pot up on stays of some sort so that your pot itself is not sitting in the water that drains out through your pot. Because remember, you are going, you're more likely to kill your cymbidium with too much love and too much water than you will with neglect. So if you're worried about, ah, does it need water now? Then you probably can leave it for another day or two before you actually give it water. Because they'd prefer to be on the drier side than to stay on the damp, boggy side. We also have a full cymbidium repotting video that we'll link in the description down below. And if you, have, if you need any further deeper information on the culture of cymbidiums, I'll link that cymbidium culture sheet that we've done in the description as well. And then you can make sure that you can get your cymbidiums growing beautifully and flowering wonderfully because there's nothing quite as rewarding as a cymbidium in full flower. And the length that the, that the flowers generally last for is amazing. And thank you for watching. If you have found any of this information helpful, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button down below, and that notification bell, bing bong, to be notified of all our upcoming content so you don't miss out on a thing. Help us grow as we help your orchids grow.